Hello again. We're looking at how we can use console multiphysics to solve problems in acoustics. In the last video, we opened up the built-in model for solving eigenvalues of a room, and we quickly meshed it and solved it. And we've been looking at some of the solutions. So this third plot group, these pressure isosurfaces, they make it clear that even though we only saw the mesh on the surfaces, the edges of the room, we've actually solved for the pressure field everywhere in that spatial domain. So let's go back and look at how the problem was defined and set up now that we've seen what it's actually achieving. So I'm going to go back to the component one node and look at these various nodes inside it. There's definitions, we haven't actually got anything here. The geometry the subnodes under that shows that the model was actually the geometry was actually built in a different CAD package and imported, and that's a fairly common way of making something like this. Now, if you look at this geometry, it's only got one domain. Domain is the word for this three-dimensional uh, space. So there's only one domain with edges. So it's not that those furniture that we can see there are objects inside it, they're actually holes in it. And if I look at it from underneath, you can see how it is. The next node down has materials. So since we're only solving for the air, we only need one material. And there it is. That's the air there. Remember, I've hidden three walls of the room or two walls in the ceiling if you prefer to make it easier so that's got the information if we look in the settings window about we're told that the material is air and the two things you need to know to solve pressure acoustics are its density and speed of sound and then the next node is the physics node i'm just going to make that a little bigger so we can see the whole thing and at the moment it's got three nodes so if I click there that says this selection here is which domain it's in but remember we've only got one if we open up this node we can see the equation that's being solved and again I'm gonna to have to resize slightly now this might not really look like the wave equation that we're studying first of all because it's in the frequency domain it's actually going to be the Helmholtz equation but because we don't want to make any assumptions about what's going on it's actually written in a rather general form that allows for various extra sources to be put in so if we set all those to zero it would and assumed some other things for example that the density is constant throughout the air then it would reduce to our more familiar Helmholtz equations. So under this pressure acoustics node, I've got three sub nodes. You can see their icons are slightly different. The pressure acoustics one and the initial values one, they are things that apply at domains, whereas the sound hard boundary one, that has a different icon here to indicate that it goes with walls. So if we go to pressure acoustics again, that's just in the one domain and it seems to duplicate a lot, a lot of what was in the pressure acoustics node above it, its parent node. But bear in mind we might want to have two separate domains within one model, for example air and water, that were obeying different sets of pressure acoustics equations. If we scroll down here we can see that it wants to get its speed of sound from the material. We could specify it directly in this node but it's better practice to supply that information with the material and there's various other things we can try. We're not going to go through every possible menu setting because there are a very great many of them indeed. What about our boundary conditions? So here we see a list of all the various numbers corresponding to the different boundaries in the problem and there's quite a lot of them but they're just the edges of the air domain. So we can see that every single surface here is set to be sound hard. There's the equation for it, and again, assuming these source terms Q 
QD vanishes and that rho is constant, that would um, result to saying that the pressure gradient has to vanish at all of these walls. So that might be moderately realistic for a plaster wall, but not for a carpeted floor and certainly not for a sofa. So we might want to make the model more sophisticated down the line by improving those boundary conditions and we could add extra nodes to that. And the mesh node, we can set this up in various ways. We can either have it do its best guess from what it knows about the physics that we've set up, or we can have a user controlled mesh. Even if we have a physics controlled mesh, the only thing we have to say is do we want a normal mesh or a finer one if we pick an extra fine one and build that. You can see that it has many more elements. Remember these elements, we're seeing triangles on the sides, on the boundaries, but that just means that throughout space, the space is filled with tetrahedra. I'm going to go back to the normal one for now and rebuild it. So that's all the information to set up our component. What about the study? Well, it's an eigenfrequency study. We can have more than one study and a study can consist of several steps. For example, you might solve a stationary problem to get the initial values for a time varying problem and so on. Here we've just got one step. It's the eigenfrequency. And we can, if we like, Um, here it's been told to search for eigenvalues around 90 hertz and if we go and look at the results we'll see that we found one at 90 it's got a set of real eigenvalues because all the walls are hard between about 75 and 110 hertz okay in the next model in the next video sorry we're going to have a go at modifying this model to try and solve some other problems that we might be interested in.